Charles, we just recorded for two hours. We did. Now what do you want? <laughs> we have to talk about our show. Okay. Who are we? And uh, what do we do? Ha. Uh, I am Martha Madrigal. And I'm Charles Tyson Jr. We are the hosts of Full Circle, the, the podcast. podcast. You are a beautiful white trans woman. I will take that. <laughs> of a certain age. <laughs> and tired beyond imagination. And you are a gorgeous black cis pan man who has shared my life for 10 years and we're engaged i put a ring on it yeah you did put a ring on it's a pretty ring too (laughs) now we have a podcast yeah there's not much we don't talk about here it's true we talk about lgbtq issues headlines of the day we talk about fun things too like movies and music and television and pop culture Mm mm-hmm And we talk about what it is to be black in America and what it is to be trans in America and how those things intersect and collide. And child, it gets interesting. And you can check us out every Tuesday wherever you get your podcasts. Because once again, we're Charles Tyson Jr. and Martha Madrigal. And this is Full Circle, the the podcast. podcast. Are we done now? I think so. Okay. Before we get into this week's episode, April Fool's Day, I'd like to say this episode will be set out a little differently to normal. If you haven't seen this film, the first half of this episode will be 100% spoiler free, as you shouldn't go into this knowing specific details. The second half will be my thoughts on spoilers and specifics. Let me know if you prefer this format and I'll incorporate it more often moving forward. So with that being said, cue the music! You're only given a little spark of madness. Followed Mr. Carpenter. What he saw couldn't have been a dream. It was too real. But it couldn't have been true either. It was too deliciously frightful. Frank, that's yesterday. Old times are only good when you've had them. That after night, all alone. Daddy's all pent up. Let's freak. You're the rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Why, hello, and welcome to this week's episode, April Fool's Day. I'm your host, Ebony, and let's get into this bitch. When a group of college students decide to spend spring break at their secluded island estate of the wealthy classmate, Muffy St. John, what starts out as a fun, hedonistic weekend turns into something more sinister. Muffy is very fond of practical jokes and sets up numerous gags throughout her mansion. But when her friends begin going missing and turn up dead, they realize that they're trapped and the isolated aisle with a mysterious and brutal killer. April Fool's Day stars Amy Steele, Deborah Foreman, Griffin O'Neill, Jay Baker, Clayton Rona, Pat Barlow, Deborah Goodrick, Tom Wilson, Mike Nomad, Tom Heaton, and Lloyd Berry. The film was written by Danilo Bach and directed by Fred Walton. A Rotten Tomatoes, April Fool's Day has a tomato meter score of 55% and an audience score of 47%. It has an R rating and grossed 11.3 million at the box office. The film is one hour and 29 minutes and got its own remake in 2007. 
Ah, oh, the 80s. A simpler time and a favourite movie decade of mine. There is nothing quite like an 80s slasher. Excessive sex and titties, titties and more titties. And April Fool's Day is no exception. With sex positions looking like they're straight out of Kama Sutra and cheesy characters everywhere you look, April Fool's Day should fall into your typical whodunit slasher. But I think what makes it stand out over the rest is the tongue-in-cheek gags throughout the film and the way it makes you question just how much of what you're really seeing is actually happening. This movie came out during the height of the slasher craze. It had to compete with titles such as Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween. Considering that April Fool's Day had one key difference from those movies, the attacks all took place off screen. Director Fred Walton once said about the film, April Fool's Day was conceived as a parody of the genre from the very beginning, hence the name April Fool's Day, instead of some other holiday. I only tried to make what I thought would be a scary movie, it just didn't happen to involve any gore or any on-screen violence. I have always believed that the anticipation of violence, the threat of violence, is usually much more frightening than the act of violence itself. You can rarely beat the audience's imagination. With each death comes a new twist into the storyline and keeps you guessing throughout the film. Sure, if you're paying close enough attention, it's not hard to pick up what the film is throwing, yet there's enough going on to still make you question what you're seeing and keep you engaged. However, this is also the downfall of the film, as once you've seen it, it's not as fun to rewatch knowing the twists and turns. April Fool's Day is definitely worth the first time watch, especially on a cheesy 80s horror night with booze and friends, but it's not one I'll be revisiting on a yearly basis. With a fun whodunit atmosphere and twists and turns around every corner, April Fool's Day is a fun ride for a first time watch. However, with the downfall of not being a very rewatchable film, April Fool's Day goes from what could be a 4 out of 5 to a 3 out of 5. Okay, now we have those specifics out of the way, let's get into these spoilers. You've been warned, so proceed with caution. April Fool's Day wouldn't be anywhere near as entertaining or keep you guessing nearly as well without the acting skills of Deborah Foreman. Deborah's portrayal of Muffy throughout the film is what holds the film together. First time I watched April Fool's, I had suspected she was a twin or a sister because of the difference between her character at the start of the film versus the end. However, to have it revealed she's not an identical twin really took me by surprise as I thought we were watching her portray the two characters, Muffy and Buffy, the entire film. The official reveal at the end, the entire time we were watching nothing more than a themed whodunit getaway, is one that is up there with some of the best. Watching these characters get quote unquote killed off one by one, you don't really suspect they were all fake. Sure, with a title like April Fool's Day, you have suspicions that it may not be real, and some of it is a hoax. However, to find out the entire plot was fake was a real chair turner. And that is the reason why I feel like this is not a rewatchable film. Because the whole build up of this film, to get to the end, you know, it's it's that build up of what are we actually seeing? How are these people being killed? Who's killing them? Why are they being killed? And then to have that final scene, or not final, but close to final scene, where they open the door and all of the people you thought were dead are just sitting there chilling in the lounge room. Like, yeah, cool, we're not really dead. Like, that, you, you can only watch that once. You only live through that once. That initial shock horror of, oh my god, they're not really dead. What the fuck is going on here? Like, don't get me wrong, I know people who do rewatch this film over and over. And they get, you know, just as, as much enjoyment out of it now as they did the first time. But for me personally, what made the film so interesting and on the edge of your seat was the fact that you know that that they're all dying and, and you didn't know why going through again and re-watching it knowing what's to come at the end it's just yeah okay it's a little fun but it's nothing exciting and then that final final scene the very final scene of the film where she's if if you go to the start of the film she's you know got a um what's it called a jack-in-the-box and she's you know playing it and she's got these little flashbacks of it then you get to the end of the film and she's back with a, you know, someone's wrapped this same, or actually that must be a different Jack in the Box, because the other one had an image on it, like a duck or something, and this one doesn't. Anyway, she's got the Jack in the Box, she's winding it up, and just before, you know, it, it pops open and you're expecting that surprise, one of the other characters comes out and you think she's, you know, she comes out and slits her throat, only to be yet again, April Fool's, another joke, she's not really dead it's fine but that final little jump scare i think you know with friday the 13th you had um him come out when she's on the boat you've got that scene where she's on the boat and he comes out and he grabs her 
I feel like no matter how many times you reuse those sorts of scenes, it's really effective. Because you know it's coming, so you're almost, you're anticipating it. But because you're anticipating it, you're on edge. So no matter how many times you see it, it still gives you that little, oh my god. <laughs> Overall, look, I do enjoy this film. As I said, it's a 3.5, 3 to 3.5 out of 5 for me personally, only because I, I can't rewatch it again and again and again. But if you want to sit there and watch it with some friends that have never seen it before, it's a really good time watching their reactions. So it's not a bad film by any means. It's goofy. It's goofy 80s over-sexualized horror with no kills on screen. Which would usually be a bad thing, but it works well with this one. It works well not seeing how everyone dies and the different scenario. Um, just adds more to that who done it atmosphere. But um, with that being said, this is a shorter review, um, sort of trialing and testing a few different methods at the moment. If you do like how short this was, if you do like the straight to the point, and especially if you do like the non-spoiler versus spoiler split in the middle please let me know i'm always looking for feedback and i'm always wanting to know what you guys prefer so let me know what you think if i've rushed it if it's too short if it's not enough information you know otherwise have a fantastic day and you'll see me next week where we have a double feature people that's right we're doing a double feature for easter being the long weekend I've got some two Easter themed movies coming up, both horror. I know, I know. She's doing horror still, I know. It's my thing, I can't help it. <laughs> but uh, we do have some non horror coming up after that with uh, Slapshot later in the month. So be prepared for a bit of a mixed bag for April, and you'll hear from me next week. Have a good day, guys. You were just listening to the Film Spark podcast for all your film needs and more. Like what you heard? Give us a shot. Follow us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods, and more. Or follow the socials at film underscore spark underscore pod. You know what? Just follow us on everything. Check out the link tree linktr.ee forward slash film spark pod. Find us, follow us, give us a shout. We always want to hear from you. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go.